Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful ThinkTech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is the general manager of the very popular local boutique swimwear stores, a former member of the French Airborne Forces, and he is the Consul of France in Hawaii. He is Guillaume Maman, and today we are going beyond France. Guillaume, great to have you here today. Thank you very much for inviting me. We've been uh, talking a lot about that. I'm very pleased uh, to be here today. I know you had a, a lot of uh, impressive guests, so I'm honored that uh, you asked me to come. Well, you're very impressive, and I love, I love when I see you working out at the Honolulu Club because you inspire me to do more weight or extra sets. Well, that's good. You uh, inspire me as well. You know, the, <laughs> the coach uh, Rusty is here, so I've got to make sure that I do my best. And you're right, I do start my day every day at the Honolulu Club. And it's very good because it uh, helps me build uh, discipline and uh, it takes me out of bed. I wake up early in the morning, make sure that I get all my exercise uh, before I going to work. It sets the day uh, for an uh, energetic uh, and fun day. We love Honolulu Club. We do. <laughs> we do. And we have all our friends. You know, it's not only, uh, we don't only go there uh, to work out, which is definitely the number one priority we have. Yep. But it's like Cheers, where everybody knows your name. <laughs> yeah. huh? we, uh, we talk to people. We uh, uh, tend to network a little bit. Uh, it's always fun, fun to see you. Uh, we joke around and we work out. Yeah. Now, Guillaume, how was it for you uh, growing up in France? Uh, very good, I would say. I, uh, I uh, come from a, uh, a normal, um, you know, a regular family in France. I was very fortunate to have uh, a, a good uh, family core, uh, great education. I'm always, uh, I always talk very highly about uh, the French uh, education, uh, high school and college. Uh, I did a lot of sports because I've always enjoyed it, uh, swimming, judo. Uh, I know soccer is very big. I didn't play much soccer, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, very, always very active. Okay, now, I've never been to France yet, but I want to go. When I go, what, where do I need to go okay, when well, I'm in France? That's a, a wonderful question. First of all, I'm very biased because I'm from Paris. Yeah. I'm a uh, many generation Parisian, so I uh, absolutely love Paris. I think Paris is one of the most beautiful, exciting city in the, in the world. I was uh, fortunate to travel a lot around the world, and, uh, and uh, of course, I love Hawaii. I would never live anywhere else than Hawaii, but I have to say Paris is very exciting. So please stop, uh, stop in Paris. Uh, you'll enjoy it tremendously. If you like good food, I always say you cannot have a bad meal in Paris, okay. wherever you go. Uh, but there are so many other things, too. That's what I love about France, uh, Le Mont Saint-Michel, which is in Normandy, a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, UNESCO site. Uh, to visit, of course. Uh, if you like skiing, I think the Alps, uh, the Savoie region is gorgeous. And of course, you heard of Provence and the French Riviera, um, where uh, Cannes, Nice, Saint-Tropez, uh, Monaco is uh, actually, I'll be there in, uh, in a couple of months. Uh, so, so many places uh, to go. Next time you go, or if you go, please let me know and I'll make sure uh, I'll set you up for a good trip. Oh, I, I, I'm going to let you know, Guillaume. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> now, you're also a member of the French Airborne Forces. That's correct. Uh, that's a, a part of my life that I, I truly enjoyed. Uh, so um, I was there in uh, 1985 and uh, I, uh, you have to volunteer to be in the French uh, Airborne Forces. Okay. So uh, what, uh, what we say, we have to sign. And, uh, and so I did uh, my time there. Uh, it was a truly a, a great experience for me, and I always talk very highly about it uh, because I learn a lot. And once again, I love sports. Uh, I love uh, jumping out of airplanes, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I always uh, remind people 72 times out of my life, I took off with an, with an airplane, but I didn't land with it. Uh, yeah, I was impatient. I got out early. Uh, and when I say 72, it's actually very unusual because most um, uh, uh, during your, your service, you do about six jumps uh, a year. Uh, I was able to do a, a sports uh, um, a training that allowed me to do uh, much more uh, during my, uh, my service. So I was very excited about that. It's something that I truly enjoy. So what's, what's the best and worst part of being in the Airborne Forces? Uh, I, uh, the worst part is that you don't <laughs> sleep much okay. and there's a, a tremendous amount of training. Uh, and uh, you're really, really uh, stuck. You can't go uh, much uh, anywhere, especially during training. It is gruesome, uh, but it's interesting because although it's the worst part, it's the best part also. Oh. I truly um, enjoy the athletic part of it. 
uh, the camaraderie that you uh, develop with uh, your fellow uh, um, uh, you know, uh, teammates, etc. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have several of them, um, still very good friends of mine. We communicate on a regular basis, social media, etc., etc. And uh, it was also a very uh, active uh, lifestyle. And as you know, I, I really enjoy that. Uh, and I have to say, jumping out of airplane, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I love it. It's a fantastic uh, experience. Not the first one. The first one is scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, Guillaume, what, is there anything that you fear? Uh, I fear many things, uh, Rusty. <laughs> I think I'll be a foolish not to fear uh, many things. But, uh, but uh, no, no longer jumping out of airplane. I'm uh, hopeful my parachute will open. <laughs> uh, but I have to tell you, the first one, I always say that is very scary because uh, your body reacts um, automatically as, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Don't jump out of a good, perfectly good airplane. And once you do it, it's a, a fantastic experience. I recommend everybody to do that. Actually. So how did you end up coming to Hawaii? Uh, very good question. I came here in uh, 1987, October. Okay. Uh, and uh, I came here, and uh, it's pretty cold in Paris in, uh, in October. Uh, and I came here for three weeks. I uh, didn't have much money in my pocket because I wanted to uh, windsurf. Uh, one of my dreams was uh, perhaps to become a, a professional windsurfer. I windsurfed a lot of France. I studied in the south of France. I was able uh, in Montpellier. Uh, so I was able to windsurf there, uh, and uh, I fell in love with, uh, with the islands. The ocean truly really brought me here. Uh, I fell in love with the ocean. I fell in love uh, with uh, the, the, the beauty of Hawaii. And after a while, it's actually the people of Hawaii that kept me here. Um, I was able to uh, meet the person that I uh, married. We had our children. Um, so I stayed here. I uh, started to work uh, in Hawaii. And uh, so 1987, that many, that's many, many years ago, yeah. uh, 32 years ago, and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, that I made that decision. That was a, a challenging decision to stay here, to uh, live away from your family. My entire family stayed in France. Uh, I did not speak the language at all, so that was, uh, that was difficult, uh, but uh, truly a decision that uh, not only I, I don't regret, but uh, every time I go uh, to Lanikai, which is in, in our background yeah, right here, yeah. uh, I, uh, I'm very thankful that I made the, the, the right decision. And you have two sons. Yes. And what are, the, what are they doing now? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have two sons, uh, which is interesting. So my two sons were born in Hawaii, but at an early age, they went to a boarding school in France. And uh, that was kind of the deal. They went to a boarding school that's near a surf spot. So we sent them actually in the... Uh, in the Land region, uh, Les Landes. Uh, so, um, so they studied, they went to high school in France, and then they came back here to go to college. Uh, both sons went to uh, UH. Uh, my oldest son uh, graduated from UH and is uh, still studying. Uh, he's, uh, he's a very serious, studious, studious gentleman. He's 28 years old, I'm very proud of him. He is uh, studying uh, environmental engineering, so Great. hopefully we'll uh, that is uh, his degree soon. My younger son, I'm also extremely proud of him, uh, came back to our, uh, Hawaii, studied a little bit of Hawaii, and then moved to uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, whereas now he is the uh, technical director of a uh, theater uh, there, and he absolutely loves what he's doing. There's also a big wine region in, uh, in uh, San Luis Obispo. Uh, so he's uh, surrounded by... Uh, we love culture, wine. And we love, <laughs> we French, love wine. French people love wine in general. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. I'm very proud of uh, my two sons. They've been a uh, tremendous source of inspiration, actually, for me. Um, and uh, so I sent them to France. I think that's a good question because I wanted to make sure that they have um, American culture, Hawaiian culture, because that was important to them, uh, but also French culture, that they were able not just to speak, uh, but to understand the culture and the spirit uh, of France that is uh, very dear to me. Uh, so it was also a challenge for them, but uh, I, uh, once again, I think that was a very wise decision. Oh, it's great yeah. to experience that. Well, one thing that I did with my uh, sons very early, and I highly recommend people to do that, is I only spoke to them in French at the, at the beginning of their life. Oh, wow. So with, uh, with mom, you use those words in English. With dad, you use those words in French. And, uh, you know, when you're young, your brain develops. You don't realize there are <laughs> two languages. And so uh, that's how they were able to uh, be bilingual extremely fast. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that will um, serve them well in their life. That's the secret, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. And then how did you end up meeting your wife, Teresa? Yes, so uh, Teresa, it's interesting. I've known her for quite a long time. And uh, I understand you've known her yeah. for quite a long time, too. Uh, <laughs> and a uh, wonderful uh, lady, uh, very much, uh, very much uh, uh, happy with, uh, with the decision that, uh, that uh, we made uh, to be together. I met Teresa uh, quite a long time ago. She used to work for my best friend, who was a senator at the time. Oh. And so I used to visit him at the Senate, at his office. 
And uh, she didn't care much for me, actually, 20 <laughs> years ago. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, she used to tell, uh, you know, my friend, uh, you know, maybe you should hang around this, uh, this guy. I'm not so sure. Uh, but we got to know each other better. And, uh, of course, we fell in love. And uh, so we've been together for uh, almost 10 years. We got married uh, in Paris. Yeah. Uh, it was a wonderful celebration with my family. We actually had some... Um, dancers, uh, Hawaiian dancers that did hula for us, so we were able to integrate both cultures, Parisian culture and, uh, and uh, dancers from um, a uh, halau here uh, in Manoa, yeah. actually, uh, and they have a school in Paris, so we were able to, uh, to do a uh, wonderful ceremony. Uh, but yeah, I've known Teresa for quite a long time, and, uh, and we're very happy. Uh, she's you, a wonderful, wonderful lady, way above my league. You guys are absolutely perfect together. <laughs> you guys are perfect together. Now, Thank you. Guillaume, how did you become the honorary consul of France in Hawaii? Yes, yes. Uh, so that happened about uh, uh, a little more than four years ago. Uh, actually, more than five years ago, I was approached by the honorary consul at the time. Uh, there's an age where they need to retire. So she contacted me and uh, asked me if uh, I wanted to take over. I was very honored uh, to uh, get that phone call. Uh, it took me a little bit of time because I wanted to study and make sure that uh, I don't take on a uh, duty uh, where I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do the right thing. So um, I uh, studied a, a little bit. It took uh, nine to ten months of, uh, of uh, checking because you have to do an interview with the French government. Then it goes to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then you have to be vetted, of course, by the... Um, State Department, because they give you uh, credentials, yeah. you become basically a diplomat here in the in the state of Hawaii. Uh, so I accepted the position, and um, and after nine months, I became the uh, honorary consul. It's a tremendous honor uh, and truly a great pleasure. I I, I do that with uh, with great fun for the love of my country and uh, and for the love of the people here that I, I serve. We have about three thousand uh, residents uh, here in Hawaii, French residents in the entire state of Hawaii. Uh, it's hard to determine the exact number because people move in yeah. and out. They don't all register uh, at my consulate. We have a, a also a registered uh, list. And we have about 24,000 uh, visitors every year. So quite a lot of people actually come through yeah, Hawaii. That's so we a have lot. to deal uh, with a lot of people. Now, what are, what are your responsibilities as the consul? Yes, so uh, if I have to, uh, to d d define it in one sentence, it's basically to fulfill the mission of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in France. When I first started, it was called the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, Economic Development. Now it's called the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs, uh, which is basically the State Department, uh, the equivalent of the State Department in France. So fulfill their mission, their diplomatic mission to represent uh, France, but mostly to uh, promote and protect the interest of France uh, within the state of Hawaii. What it means is uh, uh, helping a French citizen, whether they reside here or uh, they are visitors, and helping them in, uh, and protect them in, uh, in many, many ways. Uh, if they get hurt, if uh, they get arrested, if, uh, um, you know, they have a, if there's a, a national disaster, it's uh, our role actually to make sure that we guide them and we receive a, a, a tremendous training in terms of that. If there's an earthquake, when we had for example, some problems in, uh, in on the Big Island with the uh, with the volcano. Yeah. Fortunately, it was not as bad as uh, you know the the, the media uh, showed it. But uh, of course, there was some concern in Paris, so they were contacting me and say, "What you can, what can we do to protect uh, the the French citizen and also so so uh, protect and then uh, promote the interest of France." So um, uh, we help we here to uh, help also with uh, the interest of uh, French uh, uh, citizens here, French businesses. Uh, that want to uh, get implanted here in Hawaii. You know, a lot of people uh, don't realize, but uh, the, the, the biggest bank uh, in Hawaii is French. The biggest retail uh, company is French. I mean, First Hawaiian Bank is uh, owned by uh, BNP, <laughs> Banque That's Nationale right. de Paris. I, I realize that at the moment they're trying to uh, the separate slowly themselves. I think they're selling their shares. But it's a big part of, uh, of Hawaii, of the, the business environment. And then DFS is part of uh, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, White Tennessee. Uh, I'm not saying that I have a, a lot of input in that, but I'm saying that there's definitely interest uh, of French businesses in Hawaii, and that's vice versa. We help a lot with um, uh, local businesses that would like to do business uh, uh, in uh, France, and also uh, in French Polynesia, New Caledonia, not very far from here, uh, because we have a, a little bit of the same environment, type yeah. of environment. Uh, for that. And then, of course, 
a major part of my work is uh, help with administrative affairs uh, for our French citizens here, whether uh, you know, we issue passports, uh, passes, uh, and that, of course, it's in coordination with the uh, Consulate General of France in San Francisco. I work very, very closely with them. I don't print passport, I don't issue them, uh, but we do all the uh, papers to make sure that we do that. Uh, and then uh, I'm able also to certify uh, certain signatures for important um, documents, not all of them, uh, but we have a certain amount of uh, paper that we can do. So we serve a little bit as a uh, notary public for um, all their uh, You do, you do documents. so many things. I mean, it, it's, I think it's a win-win situation, but we're so lucky to have someone like you here. But Guillaume, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond France. Very good. Thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Guillaume Maman. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Guillaume Maman who is the general manager of the very popular local boutique swimwear stores, a former member of the French Airborne Forces, and he is the Consul of France in Hawaii. And today, we are going beyond France. Guillaume, you are also the general manager of local boutique. How did that come about? Uh, that's been about uh, 23 years now. Uh, I joined in 1996. Uh, local boutique was created in 1978, oh. and uh, I was fortunate uh, to uh, join uh, in 1996, um, and uh, we've developed stores in uh, Hawaii, Guam, Saipan, Japan, Korea, Las Vegas. Uh, so quite a, a, a wide network of stores that we've developed uh, the last uh, 23 years. Some uh, are, are still open, of course. Yep. Uh, some we close, for example, in Las Vegas, uh, Okinawa also we had one. Uh, and then we have seasonal stores also uh, in Japan that open mostly during the summer. Uh, we understand selling bathing suits in the winter so it can sometimes be a challenge. So we do have a store all worldwide, uh, I'm sorry, um, um, all year long in, uh, in Japan, and then we have seasonal stores in Japan. And you guys, you guys are also the, a big sponsor for the Miss Hawaii USA pageant. Yes, so yes. So why, why did you guys uh, decide to be a big sponsor there? Well, I thought it was a, a natural uh, partnership. Um, the director of the pageant that you know well uh, contacted us yep. and uh, we uh, worked in a great partnership with them. Uh, we uh, sponsor the uh, Miss Hawaii USA and the Miss Teen USA uh, with our swimsuit. I think it's the perfect part partnership. Everything is made here in Hawaii. It's designed, cut, sewn, uh, printed, uh, sent to our stores from uh, our location in Hawaii. So we thought it was, uh, it was a perfect uh, way uh, to uh, partner uh, and be a Hawaii uh, manufactured sponsoring Miss Hawaii USA. Yeah, no, I, it's great. And they all seem to love it. And you've seen a lot of the young women develop through the years. I mean, getting more growth, more confidence. What do you, what do you see the development from these girls in your experience? Yeah, I think it's a very good question because people think it's just a uh, beauty contest and it's not. I think it helps so much more in the development of uh, their uh, confidence of their personality. And actually, um, I learned it from uh, Teresa, who is uh, a yeah. former uh, Miss uh, Hawaii International. It was a Miss Aloha Maui, etc. And uh, I, I, I uh, can see that it helps 
uh, develop uh, their confidence. I see many former Miss Hawaii, Miss Hawaii USA, Miss Hawaii International, etc., uh, excel in the business world uh, at this moment, uh, and because uh, I can see that it helped them, um, um, you know, build their character, their personality. It's not easy uh, to walk in, uh, you know, in a catwalk in front of uh, many people on TV and to answer uh, to answer all those questions. Yeah. That are tough questions yeah. sometimes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be asked uh, those questions. So. Um, I, I actually think it's, it truly goes uh, beyond a, a beauty contest, and that's, that's, that's not the part that we like. One thing that, I, I mean, that's not, only the, the, that's not the only part that we like, yeah. uh, the, the beauty part. One thing that we do also uh, with um, uh, Miss Hawaii USA and uh, Miss Teen is that they also have a contract with us to model for one year. So uh, we uh, work with them, we do some uh, photo shoots, able to um, uh, have their pictures in our stores. Very recognizable. Everybody here in Hawaii, oh, yeah. as you know, know who uh, Miss Hawaii USA is, Miss Teen USA is. Uh, we uh, did the shows in, uh, in uh, Tokyo, actually. We took a former Miss uh, Hawaii USA to, in Tokyo when we had about 30,000 people watching oh, the show. It wow. was called Girls Awards. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good partnership. I'm, uh, we're very happy. We hope to continue for many years. Oh, I'm sure. It's, it's definitely a win-win situation. Yes. Guillaume, you're such a positive person and you're such a great leader. And you, you are a big supporter of my book. I mean, you bought yes. a bunch of my books. Uh, what do you like about yes. Beyond the Lines? You know, I got to say, um, uh, first of all, I'm going to start with you, what I like about <laughs> you. Seriously, because you have been a great source of inspiration for me. Your show is number one. Uh, you're, you're doing uh, outstanding. You've always been tremendously positive. Every time I see you, uh, you're always very positive. So it shows truly in your success. Um, then I was able, about a year ago, when you published your book, uh, I was uh, fortunate to be one of the, hopefully the first one to, uh, to uh, purchase your book. I read it, and uh, it, it, it uh, not only reinforced what I thought about leadership, but I learned so much about, you're talking about uh, building character, you're talking about the character of a champion, and you're talking about, like, like the title says, beyond the line, thinking outside the box in order to help you inside the box. Yep. And so I got a lot out of that. I think you, uh, you have been a tremendous source of inspiration uh, for me, and I know for many, many business people uh, in, the, uh, in the business community here in Hawaii. So uh, I, I'd like to thank you. Actually. I'm, I'm glad I'm coming here to thank you uh, for the inspiration that you give us. Well, thank you, Guillaume. <laughs> now, you're a great leader. What do you think the, the greatest leaders do? Uh, I, one word, inspire. Oh. Uh, I think to me, I always, uh, I, 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 it's important to follow a leader that inspires me. And uh, if you look in history, most of the, the leaders, whether they're head of state or military leaders, I'm a, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Marquis de Lafayette, uh, the famous battle of uh, 1781 at Yorktown that uh, defined uh, America, actually, yeah. where we are now. I'm a, a, a great admirer of uh, Napoleon, and I think those leaders were able to truly inspire their people. It's not easy, uh, if you talk about Napoleon, it's not easy uh, to walk to Russia, fight uh, Prussian army, Russian army, British army, et cetera, et cetera, and then walk back. You've got to be an inspiring uh, person to do that. And so, uh, so to answer your question, I think the, the, the number one quality uh, is true to inspire your team. No, I love hearing that. And, and you can only inspire them, but it's up to them to really motivate themselves. Right. Now, what is, what's been like the biggest challenge in your life that you have to overcome? Uh, well, it's interesting. If I had to, uh, to uh, remember the biggest challenge was probably coming here in uh, 1987, not speaking the language. Uh, and uh, I was a little bit lost. It was, uh, you know, I came here just for three weeks. I was supposed <laughs> to uh, come, uh, windsurf, take some pictures perhaps for uh, some potential sponsors, you know, and then come back. and. Uh, and so when I, I started to uh, liken it, I said, I'm gonna, gonna stay a little longer. Then I met uh, you know, many friends, I decided to stay. And then I realized, well, I might have to make my life here. And uh, so that was a challenge because uh, I left my, uh, my family uh, you know, in France. Yeah. Uh, they were very supportive, by the way. I'm, I'm very glad that they said, you know, Guillaume, do, do, do whatever is the best for you. Uh, and so uh, learn the language and, uh, you know, starting a new life all over. I think that was perhaps the, the, one of the biggest challenges. But it's good. I welcome challenges. And, and I tell you why, uh, Rusty, because uh, uh, interesting, you asked me what my uh, biggest challenge, although that was my biggest challenge, it also was the best decision I've ever taken. 
So uh, sometimes a, uh, you know, a, a, a tough um, hurdle, if you're able to uh, go over it, is going to be uh, your biggest achievement. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And what do you think, Guillaume, is your, like a lesson that you've learned in your life that really impacted you? You know, I have a, uh, an experience in my life that I think impacted me, uh, and I always think about it. Uh, um, I think it was in the, uh, in the early 90s. Uh, I was actually a, a young uh, businessman. I tried to do um, a, uh, we tried to open our own company. It was a virtual reality company. It was not doing well at all. And I remember I was completely uh, out of money. I invested everything in it. It was not doing well. Uh, I remember being very depressed on a Sunday night. And, you know, Sunday, that's when the newspaper comes. At the time, it was the advertiser. I looked at the, uh, an ad. It was a one-line ad uh, for a vice president for a company. And I, uh, I responded to the ad. I was called on Monday. I was hired on Tuesday. On uh, Friday, actually on Thursday, I was sent uh, on a trip all over Asia, 18 different countries, and I landed in Hong Kong. I've never been to Hong Kong. And I stayed at the Mandarin Oriental. At the time, they sent you a beautiful car. It was like a stretched uh, Mercedes. Wow. And, uh, and I was in my early 20s, and they served you champagne. And I remember thinking, um, a week ago, I was completely depressed and didn't know what's going to happen with my life. And now here I am drinking champagne like a millionaire. I was not a millionaire, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, drinking champagne, going to a great, uh, a great hotel, meeting some new people, starting a new adventure, traveling in a place that I've always wanted to visit. So actually, it was a, a, a tough but good lesson knowing that, uh, and I always remember that word, the darkest hour is the one preceding dawn. And so when, you, when you're in your darkest hour, look at the light. Look at the bright, uh, at the bright side. Um, I, I uh, relate to uh, windsurfing also. When you uh, windsurf in big waves and you get washed in the water, uh, one of the tricks to know is open your eyes in the water and make sure that you go towards the sunlight, <laughs> not down. Uh, so make sure that you're able to, uh, to go up. So I apply that to my life and I apply that to uh, business and everything else. Um, to make sure that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, make sure that you continue to go towards it uh, because you, you are going to reach it. Yeah, inspiring hope is such an important thing. Yes. I mean, and people, I mean, like you said, you're so depressed, but just one week later, everything just turned around. Exactly, and it can, uh, it can take time. I'm not saying that everything's going to happen in a week, but it can also uh, change on a dime, and I think it's important to uh, remember that. And uh, not, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, you, you, we all, by the way, get, uh, get worried and depressed. Uh, worry about what you can control. I always say that. So, uh, you know, control your life, control uh, the action that you do. Uh, don't worry about things that, uh, that uh, you can't do anything about it. Work for what it is. And what you said is very true, hope. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful, powerful feeling. Yeah, and having the right mindset and perspective. And I really appreciate you sharing all of your perspectives and the positivity. I feel the positive energy with you every time I see you, Guillaume. And, and, and vice versa. I always feel it. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you for being on the show today. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Guillaume and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.